Okay, so uh, again, a question I think is how do heavenly bodies move? That's the first question that we want. How do the heavenly bodies move? Paano siya gumagalaw and bakit ganun yung paggalaw niya? And it, this is this question is not um, really uh, uh, a question that's asked uh, um, today. Uh, it's a really long time ago uh, this, when the, the question was first asked. The ancient Greeks have, um, some, have some hypothesis on how do heavenly how do the heavenly bodies move. I already discussed this in one supplementary discussion involving um, when we discussed Newton's laws, for example, and. Um, they said uh, um, in the Aristotelian tradition, so for example, uh, the heavenly bodies, uh, the motion of the heavenly bodies and the motion of the earth, they're not the same. And therefore, you cannot explain the motion of the heavenly bodies so from the motion uh, from what we know in earth, because earth is again corruptible. Kung naalala niyo yung discussion na yun, that's basically what we know, uh, what was known um, about 2,000 years ago. That is, since uh, the, the heavenly bodies are perfect beings, uh, you cannot explain the, the behavior of these perfectly beings. Basta alam mo, umiikot siya in circles relative to Earth. Hence, you have ge your geocentric theory. As to why, um, medyo hindi natin matarok yun. Or hindi natin maiisi kung paano. Because, again, we're corruptible beings and therefore, iba yung uh, mechanics sa sinusunod ng heavenly bodies or ng celestial domain sa terrestrial domain. Okay. So, uh, why do, na question is, why do objects move in circular orbits? So, uh, ang tanong nga, circular nga ba talaga yan? Okay, we will see later that it is not actually circular, it's elliptical. But for very small eccentricities, the uh, the object will move approximately circular. Kaya yung nakikita ng mga earlier observations, medyo circular yung nagiging shape ng mga or orbits na yun. So, But the question is, why? Ano yung, ano yung reason? Bakit ganun yung, ganun yung nangyayari? And then finally, we have, can we describe the motion of the heavenly bodies by what we know here on Earth? So if you... Um, if you ask Aristotle, for example, and years ago or 2,000 years ago, he will say um, maybe not because at the end of the day, we only know um, uh, the motion in the terrestrial domain is, again, different from the motion in the in the celestial domain. So the motion here on Earth, which is um, natural, violent, or alteration, is very different from the perfect circular motion of bodies, um, uh, of bodies that are encircling the Earth. Ngayon, this is not, uh, ngayon, ngayon, alam natin na hindi yung, yung case, that in fact, Newton has shown that you can explain using a simple equation the motion of heavenly bodies, which is your universal law of gravitation. Okay, so, so the law of gravitation states this, every particle on, of matter in the universe attracts every other particle with a force that is directly proportional to the product of the masses of the particles and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So we have F. So um, in a way, uh, there are two principles here. So first, the force is directly proportional to the masses. And then second, the force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. That is, um, this is um, Newton said this in his Principia Mathematica in 1678. In fact, it's the book three. We'll explain that in the supplementary discussion. But uh, uh, there is an analysis um, by Newton about this, but he found out that actually the force exerted um, based on mass, on basically just the mass of two objects, is directly proportional to their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Yun lang naman yun. So in equation form, ang itsura niya ay ganito. So if, for example, you have two bodies, one and two, for example, you have two bodies, one and two, and then the, the gravitational force exerted by one on object two is equal to gm1 m2 over r12 squared times r12 hat. So what are these, what do these variables mean? Of course, let's say that the masses of two objects are m1 and m2 respectively. And then let's say that r12 is the distance uh, between them. So uh, in that case, what you need to do is, again, it's proportional to the inverse square of the distance between them. Because that's why there, you have a square term here. And the R12 here is uh, the unit vector from 1 going to 2. So that's basically what uh, the universal law of gravitation states. So the negative sign here indicates that the force is attractive. And therefore, the tendency of the two masses is to be attracted to each other. That is a characteristic of gravitational force. The gravitational force is always attractive. Okay? So, um, now there's a proportionality constant here. Remember, um, Newton only stated uh, a proportionality, a proportionality relation. Therefore, there should be a proportionality constant. And um, it was measured, and that 
quantity is called the G or the universal gravitational constant. So G has sub value 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. So um, in fact, the universal of uh, universal gravitational constant is one of the hardest um, to measure uh, to, with accuracy, with uh, with a perfect or greater uh, with a great accuracy, simply because the number is very small. Kaya ang hirap niya measure. And like other physical constants, mas madaling measure yung mga yun compared to universal gravitational constant because of the small magnitude of g, which is times ten to the minus eleven. Medyo maliit nga yan. Now, uh, of course, meron tayong g na alam, which is the acceleration due to gravity. They're not the same. Ha? Wag ingat dito. Capital G is not the same as small g, but they have a relationship. Okay, we'll see that later. Capital G is not small g. So, uh, dito, yung capital G yung kailangan natin, which is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newton meters squared per kilogram squared. Questions? May tanong ba? May tanong ba rito? Wala? Walang tanong? Anyone? Guys? Wala? Okay, wala. Okay. Now, Again, this is the diagram that I want to show you. So again, you have two masses, M1 and M2 here. Then the force of them is attractive. So the force of them is attractive. Therefore, if they're at rest initially and there are no other forces acting on them, what will happen is they will be closer to each other through time. Because there is a force exerted uh, by one onto other and it, they are in the same direction. So, and the magnitude of a force is simply GMM over R squared. Okay? In solving problems, minsan, dinadrop na natin yung negative sign na yan kasi nare-reflect na yung negative sign dito sa unit vector na to. Um, we will see later na hindi natin gagamitin yung negative sign when we solve um, for the equations that we want because it's not, uh, it's already reflected. Um, the direction of the of the force is already reflected in the in the unit vector that we will be solving. So, um, wag kayong malilito later kung nawawala minsan yung negative sign because it's not, uh, it's already indicated in the unit vector. Okay? So, yun. Again, you have any two particles that are interacting with only masses uh, um, via their masses only. So, uh, so if the point is any object that has mass will exert a gravitational force. Diba? Pero, ang tanong natin, ganito. Um, before we go to our question, let's go to Newton's cello. So, uh, alam natin um, na meron tayong planets. And we, these planets are not point particles. Because as we see here, this diagram here only shows point particles. But in fact, we can extend it to any object that has a spherical mass distribution. So, for example, if you have a planet that is spherical in nature, like this one, you have, let's say you have two planets here, or two um, spherical objects in general, which with mass or with radii r1 and r2 respectively, then what we can do here, if if we know the radius between them or the distance of the centers of these two masses, let's say that's given by small r, then what we can do is to treat these objects as if they are point particles, and then determine the force exerted by one onto other using Newton's universal law of gravitation. Ang tawag doon ay Newton's shell law. So, what you can do is again, simplify these two ma spherical masses here into point particles with mass M1 and M2 located at the centers of the original point mass of the original spheres. And then you can calculate the, the, the gravitational force using your usual universal law of gravitation. That is, the gravitational effect outside the important keyword here is outside any spherical symmetric mass distribution is the same as though all the mass were concentrated at the center. Uh, some historical point of view, Newton uh, has a problem with this before. Uh, before he discovered his universal law of gravitation, one reason kaya nagtagal siya is because hindi niya ma-reconcile. Ano yung gravitational force in exert ng some spherical object? Ng some massive spherical object? Um, Doon siya natagal. And in fact, he needed to invent um, calculus, for example, to, to realize um, this, uh, this shell here. Okay? So, but the point here is, yes, this is true that if you have two masses here, the gravitational force exerted outside is just as if these two masses here are in uh, a point, uh, are, as, are um, the masses, uh, the mass of the two objects are in its center. Okay? It's in geometrical center, for example, or it's in center of mass. Okay? Malino ba to? Clear ba to? Questions? Anyone? Wala? Walang tanong? Wala? Okay, wala. Sige. Now, uh, this is my question na sinasabi ko. Because since lahat naman tayo, uh, there's a gravitational force acting on all bodies regardless. Basta may mass yan, 
bakit hindi ako nag-gravitate sa mga classmates ko or sa for example in my setup bakit di ako lum, bakit hindi ako hinahatak ng laptop ko o ng camera ko or yung isang itong voice ano ko di ba bakit hindi ako hinahatak why do i not feel gravitating towards my classmates or towards other objects for example bakit hindi nangyayari yon remember the answer is this kasi remember your gravitational force If let's say gm1 m2 over r1 2 squared negative r hat 1 2 okay so let's say you are you are 0.2 in this uh, in this case and if you look some dimension uh, if you plug in some numbers here let's say you have um you are at a distance one meter from one of your classmates so sayang remote learning nga pala ngayon hindi natin magagawa to so let's say you have one meter here because this g here is relatively small It's about order of 10 to the minus 11. And let's say, um, nasa 10 squared to. Nasa 10 squared to. The gravitational force is still um, of the order 10 to the minus 5 newtons. It's really small. Hence, hindi mo talaga may experience or hindi mo talaga, hindi, ta hindi ka talaga mag accelerate um, towards your classmates if you only have this force here. Because it's very small. Okay. And if you um if you calculate the acceleration that you will get from this, is this about 10 to the minus six newtons here, which is again very small. And therefore, the gravitational force exerted by the Earth on the object is the one that's dominating. Yun yung malaki. Times 9.81 meters per second squared. Yet. And therefore, that's the only force that you are experiencing. Uh, um, that's the only force that you are feeling, not necessarily experiencing, because again, you are technically experiencing all the gravitational forces. Um on all objects so that's acted on uh, upon you by other objects so, okay so yun yung nangyayari therefore yes you are uh, gravitating towards like your your classmates but it is very small that you don't ex don't don't feel it or you don't um see it okay ika nga ni Paul Dirac Paul Dirac is um, a Nobel Prize winner of physics in 1933 your Dirac equation for uh, relativistic, relativistic quantum mechanics is uh there Uh, one of the most celebrated scientists of the 20th century, ika nga niya, pick a flower on Earth and you move the farthest star. Because, um, again, if you have a far star, the distance between you and that um, and that star is relatively um, relatively large. And therefore, the gravitational force exerted by you on, the, uh, on that star is relatively small, even if that star is relatively massive. Okay? So... Again, because of the magnitudes of the forces, the gravitational force is relatively weak compared to other forces. Hence, you don't feel gravitating towards your classmates. Pero, there's still a force exerted um, on you by your classmates. Malino ba yon? Clear ba? Clear ba to? Questions? May questions ba? Wala? Walang tanong? Wala. Okay. 